ladies and gents, and welcome back to Star Citizen with Mags. And today, well, today we're not doing any combat. It's no multi-crew. I'm just going to nick out in a little ship, and we're going to do a little bit of salvaging and exploring in the Persistent Universe. Since we're really not planning to do any combat in this particular one, today's ship is the M50. It is a ship by Orange and Jump Works. It is a light racing ship. Now, it does have a couple of missile rails and it does have a couple of guns, but this thing is built for high-speed flight and racing, not for combat. Uh, you'll also notice on the screen the indent in the top and bottom of the screen. This is because I am running the Pirate Faction Heavy Armor now. So, we'll just jump on board the M50. It boards, well, much like a normal traditional fighter would you climb up over the side and crawl in the cockpit nice and simple the cockpit is very pretty to look at uh interestingly though it has some really bad rearward approved. visibility alert systems overheating yes, Origin yes, yes. Jump works hurry up. at your service core system operational although i do admit that you raised contact scan initiated shut up thank you the um the camera won't actually pan back past 90 degrees contact scan initiated shut up you can't actually look at what's going on behind you, and the cockpit tapers backwards at an angle. So if you're looking Contact. at... Contact. Scan. Initiated. That is getting really annoying. Oh, got a Vanguard out there. Um, as you can see, if you look back on the left or right, the cockpit tapers up, so you actually don't have incredibly good side visibility. This is all about the forward visibility, the high-speed racing capability, which actually makes it really good for what we're doing today. Anyway, just a quick jump through... Well, it's, it's not really hyperspace, a quantum jump is only 0.2% of the speed of light, but nevertheless, we are in. And the heavy armor looks, well, I actually think the light pirate faction armor looks better, but the heavy armor definitely looks like it can take a hit. And this is our destination. This is Yila. This is a moon in orbit of Crusader that has a planetary ring, a ring of asteroids that is orbiting it. Now, scattered through this asteroid ring, and you have to discover them for yourself, is a number of wrecks. These wrecks will contain rare items, including weapons, uh, various supplies, and occasionally even ships that are meant to be possible to commandeer, although I've never actually managed to commandeer one. The reason why I'm actually doing this video now is I'm not entirely sure Yila is going to be the way it currently is as of the next patch for the Star Citizen Persistent Universe for the the uh, current test client. Yila is meant to be the location for the new pirate faction base that's coming in. It will be a large asteroid that is orbiting this moon. And if you happen to have a criminal rating and you die in the Persistent Universe, it will be the place that you respawn. So, we found our first wreck. It was right near the jumping point. You will notice a green glow that comes off the crates or the markers uh, around the ship. This is how you manage to identify the wrecks at range. It, you would think it would be really easy, this neon green glow just floating in space. When you start positioning that glow over those asteroids, it becomes incredibly difficult to spot, and it doesn't pulse. So you just have to keep your eyes very, very sharp for a slight tinge of the colour green in the background to give it away. It is also something that can be easily blocked by the asteroids themselves, so if there's one between you and the target, you'll never see them. That said, once you get used to it, they're not too hard to locate. I'm just bringing the ship in nice and close. One of the advantages of the M50 for doing this kind of work is it is a very, very small ship. I've been on ships in Star Citizen that have guns bigger than this thing. Just quickly jump out of the top and into the void. We'll leave the M50 floating there, it's perfectly safe for the moment. And as you can see, if you look at the wrecks, you'll see a number of crates with a green, neon green lights on them. These are the supplies. So this was some kind of transport ship. It's been destroyed, it's just a wreck in space. Some of the cargo is still intact. So we're going to have to have a wander around and see exactly what is here. I'm just trying to get a good angle on all the wrecks. Some of these wrecks, if you manage to position yourself in just the right way, you can actually work out what the ship was. I can see an engine nacelle in the top right hand corner of the screen at the moment. With this long curvy bit here at the front. I'm not actually sure about this one. The engine nacelles are too small for a constellation. Um, 
whatever it was, it doesn't look like it was particularly big. It is one of the things that's important to note with these wrecks, if you ever discover any of them, to create these, what the developers have actually done is taken the damage mesh from one of the ships that actually exists in Star Citizen, and they've twisted it, warped it, and destroyed it, and made that the random wreck you discover. So, we have alcohol. Right, so somebody was hauling hooch, beautiful. Anyways, I'll pick those up. Um, at the moment, I'm not entirely sure what to do with these, to be perfectly honest, so I just collect them anyway. Uh, yeah, if you sit back and look at the ships on the right angle, you will be able to work out, in some cases, exactly what the ship was before it was destroyed. It's a fun little game to try and play, sort of like uh, trying to identify a 3D puzzle. Oh, hello, we've got a weapons crate here. For those of you who are looking for higher end weapons and you've just come into the game, you don't have the money to get them yet, this isn't a bad way of doing it. So we've just picked up a pistol here, this is an upgrade for the standard one. Have a look, what do we got? It is a projectile, I think. Yep, there we go, you see the shell casing go out and the discharge of the powder. Uh, interesting fact, if the shell contains both the combustible powder and an oxidizing agent, a standard pistol, what we use today, would actually work in space. It'd actually work a hell of a lot better than it does on Earth, because there's nothing to slow it down, there's nothing in the barrel. But anyways, free pistol upgrade, moving on to the next crate. And so quickly scooting through time, we arrive up at the next crate, and we have another pistol. So the owner was into his handguns. Uh, looks like it's an identical pistol to the one we already have, so we have no reason to actually grab that one. We'll just move straight onto the next crate. And it turns out the next crate was actually the last one, and it had a massive pile of cigars inside of it. Again, I'm not entirely sure what to do with these, but I'll be collecting them nonetheless. Actually, now that I think about it, cigars, hard liquor, and handguns, I don't know who the owner of this ship was, but they really sound like my kind of person. But anyways, this is the first wreck we have explored. Time to head back to the ship, jump back in, and head on to the next one and see what we can find there. Hopefully something a little bit bigger and a little bit more impressive. Although these are sort of randomly generated, so it is a bit hit and miss what you'll actually find. Getting back into the ship while you're in space is actually kind of easy. Just float over the cockpit until you get the use icon, and it'll snap open and you get. Landing gear deployed. Landing gear raised. Landing gear deployed. Landing gear raised. Landing gear deployed. Refreshing shields. I have absolutely no idea what the hell was happening then, but fair enough. Such a good looking little ship, this one. It really is. I might actually have to get myself one when the PU goes live. Anyways, on to the next wreck, and this was a large one. It had multiple layers. I thought at first this might be a constellation, but I'm thinking now that it might be a ship that is not currently flyable. It, uh, it seems too large for that. But regardless, it did have a very, very interesting weapon on board. This is the Energy Shotgun. It's one of the most powerful weapons that you can carry in Star Citizen at the moment. And this is the place where you find it. Or it is at least till the next patch when an asteroid base comes in here and it's likely that these salvage sites all disappear. There was also a couple of handguns in the crates at this particular site and some cigars, but nothing particularly interesting. So on we went in the travel searching for the next site. And well, this is basically how you look around for it. I tend to shut the ships just in a straight line going up the asteroid belt, put the the moon on my right hand side and then activate the free look so I can just look around and scan the horizon back and forth looking for the green tint. As soon as I find it I retake control of the ship and head on over. And this actually turns out to be a really good time to actually bring up something that I wanted to mention for a while. A while back I did a video and I said I really like the track IR support fixed in Star Citizen. I would really like it back and there was a comment that popped up on that video from somebody who clearly had no clue about how track IR works. Um, well, he was a dedicated mouse user, and he was rather abusive around joystick users, which I found really strange. I thought I'd just bring it up here. You do realize, everybody, that Track IR can be used by a mouse user as well, and it would allow a mouse user to be able to control the ship with the mouse and look around the cockpit at the same time without having to relinquish control of the ship in order to look over your shoulder. Track IR is for everybody, not just joystick users. 
Anyways, arriving in the second last site, once again we find a rather large weapon. This time we have found ourselves a sniper rifle with a scope. So this was a bonus. At this point I've now upgraded my pistol, I've upgraded to the energy shotgun, I still have my machine gun, and I now have a sniper rifle as well. So my armament is definitely responding well. Now the only problem with the weapons that you pick up out of these, of course, is if you do get killed, you lose all the weapons. You do not keep them after death, where if you buy a weapon from the store, after death you will still own it. The rest of the crates in this site had pretty much alcohol and noodles, so I moved on relatively quickly, and this is where I finally found what I was looking for. Now, while you're scavenging these sites for loot, it is entirely possible that you can be attacked by NPC pirates, which you'll then have to take out. The other part of the M50 is I can simply outrun any pirates that I run into, and this is originally what I thought this was. I thought this was a pirate vessel showing up, but as it turns out, not at all. This is an Aurora, I believe it's an LN model, the combat model of the Aurora starting ship. However, it's abandoned. It appears to be undamaged, nobody's on board, and it's not doing anything. Unfortunately, why finding an abandoned ship was the goal, uh, an Aurora is rather underwhelming. I was hoping for something like a Cutlass or something along those lines that I could really show off. But regardless, it is worth having a look at. So, just pulled in nice and close. I'm going to EVA out of the ship over and try and commandeer it. Now, the catch with trying to do this is this ship is loose in space at the moment. And it is, you know, a 20 ton ship. Even at this slow speed, if I don't come up on the door right, it will hit me and it will just push me out into space. It won't kill me at this speed, but it will just duck shove me off into the stars. And it would be very annoying, so I've got to be really careful to approach in on the door. You see a large missile rack mounted on top of the ship at the moment, and the green with the yellow and white striped paint job. I'm hoping to do a review on one of these sometime soon. And strangely, we just crawled straight through the door. I wasn't sure if maybe that's just a, a boarding in space animation glitch for one of these vessels, especially when you're commandeering. Seat is facing forward, went to jump into the seat, and I just crawled out the other side of the ship for some reason, not entirely sure what caused that. And apparently, somehow, I managed to glitch the ship because it despawned as soon as I exited it. But still, that was enough. You can see you will encounter ships out here. Apparently, Mustangs are relatively common to find. Uh, I couldn't find any references for an Aurora, but clearly Auroras do show up. I've heard Cutlasses do show up as well, and a multitude of other ships. Somebody said that they found a Constellation adrift in here as well. I don't know whether or not they got that out. I do know there is a wreck of a Constellation in here that is not flyable. I haven't found it, I've just seen photos of it. But anyways, that is the Yala asteroid belt and what you can find in there. You'll get some of the best anti-personnel weapon in the game out of the crates inside of this ring, at least for the moment, and you get them for free. The only problem is if you happen to get killed, you won't get them back. You'll have to jump in a ship and come out here and go looking for them all again. You will occasionally find ships out here, so if you've only got one of the starter ships, if you've bought just a Mustang or an Aurora, it may be worth coming out here and having a look around and see if you can snag yourself something a little bit different just for, you know, having something nice. And you never know, you might get lucky and find something significantly larger. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this video and this brief look at the Yala asteroid field. Until next time, remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more and you haven't already. Fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.